What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about hooks, fishing hooks, uh, the different kinds, when to use them, what to look out for, and what kind to get. Uh, but first, before I start jumping into my tackle boxes and talking about the hooks, let's run to Academy real quick and I'll show you what it looks like, what you're going to see, and then like I said, what hooks you need to get. Okay, let's go. I brought the kids. You can see them back there, Carlitos and Marisa. They're freezing, so we're going to go ahead and get inside and see what we can find. So we're gonna look at the, the hooks real quick. So like I said, this whole aisle full of hooks. So I know it could be overwhelming, but you know, all this stuff over here, jig heads and all this stuff, no. Uh, gamakatsu, so brand wise, gamakatsu is a really good brand. I would say that was like middle of the way. Um, your H2O's, really good. But really starting out, I mean, go hit Eagle Claw that's what we've been using ever since i was a, a kid for as long as i can remember they're going to be the cheapest ones you can find they still work uh they come in a big variety of sizes uh different purposes everything um so you look at here something small even up here so they have a like a variety pack that's nothing look at that three dollars and that'll last that's tw 24 hooks now depending on your kids and how often they get stuck i mean yes it's gonna last you maybe one or two trips but it's nothing so again you'll see them in these long bitty packages like this um usually these are better for kids and i'll explain why uh later um but then right here so the only difference is these have the the line already tied to them right and it's got a loop at the very top the other ones is just no loop no line it's just a hook and those are fine too like i said i can show you the differences um but don't get overwhelmed by what you see right stay with eagle claw if you want to spend a little more money, I got my katsu. Um, those are the ones I like, the octopus circle hooks. And then you come down a little further, H2Os are a little more expensive. Um, the owner hooks, I think, there they are, owners. In my opinion, those are like the best. The owner hooks, the brand, is the best you can get right there. That's just my opinion. So like I said, when you come here, if you do find that you're running out of hooks, Go ahead and go for the eagle claws you, you cannot go wrong with eagle claw like i said they're they're very cheap but they're effective i've caught many many fish on these hooks uh, so you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money uh, to um to bring in some fish okay so we're back at the house uh went ahead and took y'all to academies and showed y'all you know what it looks like walking down the aisle what kind of stuff you can expect to see uh, how confusing it can be looking at the different sizes of hooks the different brands of hooks um, you know what kind do you need what are you gonna be fishing for so kind of walked you through what to look for like I said the eagle claws are gonna be the best things uh, that you can get the cheapest because you are gonna lose hooks when you first start out um, so with that I'll run through just a few of the basic hooks that I have and then what I use and then a couple of tips uh, for when you're fishing with your kids so with that being said uh, this is gonna be the first one we're looking at this is called a J hook because it's shaped like the letter J. Um, these are what you're gonna find mostly in your starter kits. Uh, like I said, the ones that you see at the store. Um, pretty basic, hey, these are really good. Um, with these, you tend to, to gut hook fish sometimes if they swallow that bait and you don't set that hook quick enough. So with kids, you're gonna find that's pretty often the case, right? They don't know how to set that hook quick enough. That fish is gonna swallow that bait. The hook gets stuck in his stomach all of a sudden the fish is bleeding and then you know if you don't if you don't get it out he's gonna die so again this is gonna be your basic hook it's okay to use like I said but you have to be quick on that on, on that uh, that set and then along with the J hooks of course they come in different sizes so your size is gonna dictate what kind of fish you're gonna be fishing for if you're fishing for just bluegill something really small you want a small hook so you want to think about their mouth right if you're fishing for a small fish you're not going to put something crazy like this on that on that line right because there's no way he's going to get it uh, in his mouth they'll still go for it right they'll still bite that worm off that hook here and there but in order for them to get hooked they got to swallow that hook right and if they're not swallowing that hook they're just basically taking your bait so if you go out there and let's say you're using something like this like a size six or size eight and man they're just hitting that line hitting that line and you're just not getting them it could be that they're smaller fish and they're just basically picking that bait right off the hook so if that's the case, then you move to something smaller, smaller, smaller. And there have been times that I've had to move to something, and I don't even know if the camera will pick it up, something this small. I've actually fished with this, and for something like this, 
you need a piece of worm about that big. My dad, my dad used to tell me, he's like, you know what? You don't want to sit there and feed the fish. You don't want to get them full because you're feeding them all these worms. Give them just a little bit of taste, right? Just a little bit of a little bit of worm or or whatever bait you're using, just to keep them interested. And that's why I said, you know, one tub of worms will last you for a long time, especially if you're fishing with kids. So you do want uh, an assortment of sizes. Um, that one that I showed y'all that was at Academy had sizes two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I think it went up to twelve, and it was a twenty-four pack, and it was like two ninety-nine. That's perfect. That's going to cover all the sizes you need. And like I said, you just move up and down those sizes until you get to where those fish are actually getting hooked. Um, and then another size or another kind you might see is what's called a treble hook. So it's basically the same kind of J hook, right? So if I hold it this way, it's going to look just like that J hook I just showed you. But this one has three hooks, right? So for this one, if you're fishing with bread or mostly like punch bait, something that requires, or like chicken liver, something that requires more than one hook to hold it because it'll fall off, then you'll go to your treble hooks, right? Now you do you pretty much up your hook rate, right? Because instead of just trying to hook them with one hook, you're hooking them with three. And I have had on occasion where I've had a catfish take one of these and God dang it, I hooked them with all three of those. And it's a huge pain to, to get it out when they hook themselves three times like that. Um, like I said, so this one, same as yesterday with, uh, with the other hardware we were talking about. So this is more of a brass color. It's aged a little bit, so you probably can't tell. Uh, this is a red hook and this one is a black hook. So like I said, for the fiction that I do, the colors of the hooks don't matter. I mean, they say that the red ones are better because catfish can't see that color or whatever. I've never known that to be true. So any color you pick is going to be fine. Uh, one thing I mentioned uh, at the store was that that variety pack, right? Where it comes with that line already tied to it. So this is going to be good because when you're fishing with kids, you might have to change up those size of hooks, like I told you. And instead of having to retie and retie and retie, all you do is you pop open that swivel and you take this one out and you put the new one on. It's like a clothespin, really. And you just close it up and boom, you're there. You're ready to go. Um, the one thing, you know, with kids, it's going to take a while for them to learn how to tie the knots. And if, if you're going to be taking them out there, like I said, be patient. They're not going to know how to tie it. I mean, even for you, if you're learning, it might be difficult for you to time to the point where you're like, you know what, boom, 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 it's done. So something like this to where it's just a simple loop and you're just hooking it on your swivel and then you're going, it's going to make it a lot easier for everybody, right? You get to be on that water more too. They're happy because they're moving up and down in sizes, which are going to get you more fish. So um, if you're starting off with the kids, definitely go for these first because like I said, it's a lot easier. So after the treble hooks, there's a couple of different, I don't want to say specialty hooks, but there's other uh, hooks that you may or may not use. Uh, so this one again is just a J hook, but it's got this little wire over it. Uh, what that does is it makes it weedless. So if I'm pulling this through the weeds and usually you'll see it more for like soft baits, worms, uh, or even just swim baits. Um, so what'll happen, let's say my hand, right? Let's say this is grass. Whenever this hits that grass, that wire is going to keep that hook tip from being exposed. It'll come right over it. Same thing with branches and logs. It'll hit and it'll come right over it, right? But when that fish bites it, that fish is going to bite so hard, it's going to push down on that wire. I don't know if you can see it. You push down on that wire. When it pushes down on that wire, it's going to hook him. He's going to hit that tip, that barb, and then you got him. So really starting out, you won't need something like that unless you're fishing really heavy vegetation, then you can. This one's going to be called a kale hook. And now the difference between this one and the J hook is if you look at it, here's my eyelet right here, right? That hook tip is pointed straight up. So when I pull in that line, it's pulling straight up against that fish's mouth. Whereas with the J hooks, hopefully this is big enough to catch, the eyelet is facing this way. So you're pulling, but you're not pulling straight up. You see how it's kind of off-centered, it's not right in the middle. Uh, like I said, your J hooks are going to be your more common ones. I used to use kale a long time ago, but then they started coming out with other ones and I've kind of switched from them. Um, if you see another one, so this does look like a kale hook, right? But it has this little bitty, this little 90 degree angle and then whatever on top. This is a worm hook, right? So this is just an extra wide gap and this is just a regular worm hook. So if you're fishing with soft plastics for bass, uh, that's where you'll, these will come into play. Uh, but for bait, like what we would be doing, you're not going to need these. And then this one also, if you see something with a little screw on the top or spring, that's also for soft plastics. Uh, you won't need something. You could use something like this for regular bait, but you don't need to, right? These are going to be a little more expensive because there's more hardware on them. Um, now, um, I don't know how many years ago they came out with the circle hook, right? So J hook, J hook, J hook was what we used for the longest time. And then came the circle hook. So if you can see that, that tip is pointed back this way. Uh, here's another one. It's more of at an angle. Hopefully you can pick that up. So it's pointing straight back at the shaft. It's not pointing up. 
So the theory behind this one is whenever a fish, if you have this regular hook, right? When you hook it, that it's gonna catch that fish wherever it is. If it's in his stomach, it's catching his stomach. If it's um, deeper, then because it, it could go really deep, or even just in the side of his mouth on the very bottom. I mean, it doesn't have to be in his stomach to get stuck. But the theory behind this is when you start pulling on it, that tip is gonna catch him in the corner of his mouth, right? It's gonna come out. I'm not gonna try it. I'm not gonna show you. It's gonna come out and it's gonna get stuck right in the corner, in the top or bottom, uh, which is a lot better than getting foul hook. Now. These circle hooks, they're not foolproof. I've, I've, <laughs> I've gut hooked a few fish with these and I don't understand why. And I'm, I'm like, I'm telling the kids, you know, in these circle hooks, you're not supposed to be able to hook these, these fish in the mouth like that. You're supposed to hook them in the corner. And, and if that's the case, then it could be that you're actually setting the hook. So with the J hooks, you want to set that hook. As soon as that fish takes that bait, pop, you want to go ahead and pop your rod tip up and then hook them, right? With these, you don't do that. With these, you let the fish take off with the bait, right? As he's taking off with the bait, um, that line's gonna get tight and it's gonna start pulling it out of his mouth and then hit that corner and then you reel in. So one thing that I think, and I've switched my kids over to circle hooks for that same reason, kids don't know how to set the hook right off the bat, right? You can tell them until you're blue in the face, in the face that, hey, you have a fish, set the hook. But their first instinct is to reel, 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 reel. They don't set that hook. Or if they do, they don't do it right, right? So. That's something that you actually have to build on. So that's why I say in the very beginning, go ahead and go with a circle hook. With a circle hook, you don't have to worry about them setting the hook. All they do is pick it up and start reeling in. Um, so that's in a nutshell, that's kind of what you want to look at, right? You're going to start off with the J hooks that come with, you know, the basic kit that you have for the rod and reels. And then you may see some trouble hooks. Trouble hooks are good, but like I said, um, just be careful with them because there's three, there's three times the hooks right on that one. And then like I said, if you can move over to the circle hooks, like I said, this is this is kind of the size that we use, right? Uh, some of them you'll see that tip is actually pointing back at a 90 degree angle. This one's more of like a 45. Uh, but point is, it's not pointing straight up, right? Because that's when you'll foul hook the catfish. So this is the tip that I was telling you all the other day, right? That I said, when you're fishing with kids, you have to be very careful, right? Because they're going to sit there. They might not know how to cast, right? They, they might sit there and swing. They might forget to push the button that releases the line. And all of a sudden, that bait swinging back at them. And we'll go over how to set up the lines and, and the safest way, in my opinion, to do it because I, I think we have a pretty good track record. I've never had the kids hook themselves, like I said in my other video, that bad to where, you know, it, we had to take them to the hospital or, you know, it was just the very tip. It didn't go past the barb. And I'll show you what the barb is here in a second. But when you're taking the kids out, in my opinion, when you, so the barb, if you can picture uh, an arrow, right? You know, an arrow has like the, the tip and it comes out and it comes, there's two other tips that come down at the bottom. Well, that's kind of like a barb, right? Once it gets past that barb, that skin's gonna come back around it and it's gonna keep that hook from coming out, which is good, right? Because if a fish takes that bait, you don't wanna lose them. You want that, that hook to stay in there no matter what, he's not gonna shake it out. The problem is, is it does the same thing with skin. So you don't want your kids getting, getting hooked and that barb, going past that skin. So if they get hooked and then just the tip goes in, it's just like pulling out a needle, right? If you get stuck with a needle or a thorn, you just pop it right out. If it goes past that barb, you're gonna have problems. And I've been hooked one time past the barb and that was no fun. I, I was, funny story, I was fishing with my dad on his boat and a couple other people and one of the hooks got stuck in the carpet of the boat. So we're over here tossing and turning on the lake, right? And so I go to reach for that hook to pull it out of the carpet, well, we took another roll, that hook came out and hit right in my finger and it went past the barb and it kind of shocked me because I was like, I didn't know what to do. I'd never been hooked that bad. So I'm freaking out. My dad's like, well, can you pull it out? And I'm trying, I can't feel it. My finger's numb. I'm sitting there trying to pull it out. I can't pull it out. I grabbed some pliers. This is how bad it got. I'm thinking, man, I don't wanna have to go to the hospital. It's gonna ruin our fishing trip, whatever. I grabbed some pliers and was pulling with everything that I could to get that hook out. My hands were shaking from trying so hard to pull it. It wouldn't come. So I'm sitting there on the boat with a hook stuck in my finger thinking, what am I going to do? And then all of a sudden, like I said, you start getting that little heartbeat in your finger, right? To where you can feel the pulse because for whatever reason, it's just hurting. I didn't feel pain. I mean, I didn't feel the pain, especially when I'm pulling it, but you can, something's wrong. You can tell something's wrong. So. I eventually got it out, right? And like I said, I pulled like I've never pulled before as far as getting a hook out. And it, it scared me that I couldn't feel what I was doing. But it came out, I was scared I was gonna get it infected and it was fine, I didn't have to do anything. But ever since then, 
for all my kids like i said i've always i've always broken that barb down and there's actually some places that you go fishing that they don't allow barbs it has to be a barbless hook in other words it's just a straight hook without that barb that little curved part and i'll show you a close up here in a little bit if not i'll put it up here in the corner uh, some places are restricted. You can only use barbless hooks because it has less of a chance of hurting the fish. But in my opinion, so if it does have a barb, you have a lot better chance of hooking up, right? To keeping that fish on that hook. But when it comes to kids, to me, it's not worth it. I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, cool. At least we caught five fish, but you know, you got hooked in the neck in the, in the process. No, I'd rather say, man, we could have caught those five fish, but at least when you hooked yourself, it didn't say stuck in your skin. So for me, it's a trade off, right? It, you want it to be fun with these kids. You don't want them to be scared. You're going to be more scared of them. If you sit there and you, you see them swinging that rod and reel around and that hook's just flying, you're going to be nervous and you're going to be watching them thinking, oh my God, please let them hook themselves or somebody else. Sometimes you get stuck on the bottom and you're pulling, pulling, pulling and it'll release. And guess what? That hook's coming straight at you. I've had that happen before. My son has had that happen before. So like I said, if you break that barb or bend it back, there is a chance they can still hook themselves but if they do it's just a simple fact of just pulling it out i mean yeah it's gonna hurt like it's like getting a needle or a thorn stuck in your skin but you're not having to worry about that barb and that's the biggest thing now there are some other youtube videos y'all want to check out on how to pull out a hook that has gone past the barb and and had i known that at the time i would have probably tried that but i didn't know um but definitely watch that kind of a movie so you can tell if for some reason you choose not to to bend back that barb you can at least know what to do if that happens. I mean, sure, you can go to the hospital and, and have them take it out, but if it's something simple as you just, you know, using their technique to pull it out and just doing it right then and there and then bandaging it up, that's probably best. Um, so like I said, so what I do is I'll take, and so the reason why I do it is because, you know, I just need a few hooks. I don't need a whole bunch of barbless hooks, right? Just whatever the kids are gonna use. And like I said, with the, um, the eagle claws, they're cheap enough that you don't have to worry about it. So if I bend a hook or whatever, it's no big deal. So what you'll do, and like I said, I'll show you a close up, is that barb is hanging down right here, right at the six o'clock position. So what I'll do is I'll I'll take my pliers and hopefully you can pick this up. I'll squeeze it. I'll squeeze that barb right here. And then what I do, and I'll show you this way, all your different angles, is I'll take it, I'll squeeze that barb, and then I'll rotate that hook like this. I don't know if you heard that click. That's that barb. So now if you look at it, that barb isn't there. It's gone, it's broken off, it's down here. So what that means is just a straight needle point, right? It goes in your skin, it pops right out. Um, if you do have a big old hook like this, which is a stronger steel, you might not be able to break that barb off, right? You can squeeze and, and twist all you want to, but that steel is so strong, it's not gonna break the barb. What it will do is it'll fold it down, right? So go ahead and do your best to twist it and squeeze with the pliers as hard as you can to get that barb down and just kind of run your finger across it like that if you don't feel your skin sticking like it's not poking your skin then you're fine you may feel a little bump and a bump is fine right what you don't want is that barb um, as long as you don't feel that barb you know heaven forbid something happen with the kids um, like I said you can just pull it right out and it's not that big a deal but for most of the ones that you're gonna see um, all the ones on the starter kits are gonna have barbs in them um, another thing you might see is on the back of them you may see a couple of spikes on the shaft up over here what that is is a bait holder right so if I put a worm on here he may tend to slide off towards the bottom what that bait holder or bait keeper does is those spikes are kind of like barbs right but they're on this side of it and that'll hold that bait up here you don't have to worry about breaking those off because it's the tip that you want to worry about not back here so with that I hope that answers any questions you might have on hooks um, like I said the starter kits that you have out there are going to be sufficient to at least get you out on that water and, and get you um, catching some fish um, and then like what I would do is just as time goes on as you start losing hooks that you know they fall in the water you get stuck in trees just go ahead and start replenishing your supply with different hooks they don't have to be the ones with the lines like I said it could be just the loose hooks themselves but you're gonna be tying them up so if you have any questions concerns comments please leave me a comment down below Make sure, you sure, make sure you subscribe and like this video if you can. It just takes a quick second just to go ahead and click on it for me. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be covering uh, probably um, uh, floats and terminal tackle like swivels and bobber stops in the next video. But if there's anything else you want to see, let me know and I'll do my best to go ahead and, uh, and make y'all a video. So until then, you guys take it easy and we'll see y'all next time.